Hey guys, it's Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the step sequencer in Logic Pro 10 to work with third party drum instruments. Now, using step sequencer for uh, the drum machine designer in Logic is pretty useful because it uh, sort of labels all of uh, the instruments and uh, color codes them and everything. The problem is when you load up third party drum instruments, the step sequencer just sees this as any other instrument and tries to load up uh, by default a C major scale. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to create your own custom template for step sequencer so that you can easily load up this template for drum instruments that you might use often. So for example, I use the Butch Vig drums a lot uh, within contact. So I wanna set up a preset for this so I can easily recall this at any time and all of my rows in the step sequencer are automatically learned to the 16 notes within that instrument. So I've got contact loaded up. I've got Butch Vig drums here. The first thing I really need to do is I need to delete all of the rows in the step sequencer here. And by the way, I've already created a blank uh, pattern region. You just right click up here, control click and select create pattern region. And I'm just gonna select my first one here and then press delete and delete all of them. There we go. Uh, it's not gonna let you delete the very last one. You have to have at least one row, but that's okay. We'll delete this one later. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I'm just gonna right click here. Technically the key command to delete a row is command delete. I'm not sure why, but sometimes delete just works rather than command delete. So that's just something to think about in case you run into an issue. The next thing I'm gonna do is click learn up here. So you click the plus button and then click learn or press option command L. And what this is gonna do is learn rows for each key you play on your MIDI controller. And if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can use the musical typing keyboard. You can pull this up by pressing Command K. And what you really have to do up front is you have to figure out what notes are each of these drum samples uh, mapped to. For me, for this particular drum kit, it's C1, and then it goes up 16 half steps from there. So all I'm gonna do is either on your MIDI controller or in the musical typing keyboard, I'm gonna play each of these chromatically. And there you go, it learns all of those pads. So I can turn learn mode off now. I can delete that extra row that was C3, I can get rid of that. And now I have all of my pitches, all 16 notes within the Butch Vig drums. The, one of the, the limitations of Step Sequencer is that unless you're using Drum Machine Designer for this, you cannot show the actual kit piece name. Like I can't rename this and call this kick or snare. That kind of sucks. Uh, there is a workaround for that, but it re would require you loading up your drum instrument within Drum Machine Designer. And then, you know, for me, that would mean I'd have like 16 contact instruments. I don't want to go there. That's that's a bigger problem. So I'm just going to sort of work around it. So what I like to do now is I like to figure out uh, which kit pieces I have here. So I want to separate the kicks from the snares, from the hi-hats, the toms, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got another kick here. I'll just drag this up by C1. There's another snare. Another snare, I'll pull that up. Hi-hat, hi-hat, another hi-hat. So I've got two closed hi-hats, open hi-hat. One, I think that's the last snare, so I've got four snares. Three toms, I'm gonna put them in order, high to low. Symbols, and there we go. So I've sort of got these things in um, a better order. And like I said, because you can't rename the kit pieces and you can't rename the rows, unfortunately, one workaround I find that works pretty well is um, you can select, uh, right click on a row or control click on a row and you can give it a custom icon. So I'll just go up to drums and I'll just call these first two uh, kick drums. 
these ones are snare drums. Again, unfortunately, you can't select multiple rows at the same time, but it's just something you kind of have to work around. Okay, so I've got all of my icons uh, set here. What I like to do now is I like to add row colors for each of these. Again, it's just a visual thing that helps me to distinguish between each of the kit pieces. So to do this, you just go up to View and select Show Row Colors or press Option C. And then I'll just add a custom row color for each of these. Just sort of grouping them is what I'm doing. It's like all the snares will have the same color. All the hats will have the same color. All the toms. And then all the symbols can have the same color as well. Again, it's unfortunate that you can't select multiple rows at the same time, but we're just working within the limitations of what we have here. And so now I have a custom, um, I have a custom setup for Butch Vig drums. So I'm doing a lot of work up front, but this is gonna allow me to do very little work in the future every time I want to use my Butch Vig drum kit because I can save this entire setup here as a preset. So to do this, you click here, and you, then you click on this little cog icon here, this little uh, gear here, and you select Save Template, and then you give it a name. So I'll just call this Butch Vig Template. So now, if I ever want to use Butch Vig again, I can, I'll start from scratch here. Blank software instrument, I'll load up Contact, load up Butch, uh, Butch Vig, um, choose whatever preset within the Butch Vig drums that I want. I'll just use the stock setting. Load up a pattern region. Go to my user templates. Select Butch Vig template, and there it is. So that's how you can set up the step sequencer to work with third-party drum instruments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.